And the January 6th committee has voted unanimously to subpoena former President Trump. And lawmakers on the panel say they have an obligation to seek testimony and relevant documents from him. Also, during yesterday's hearing, they showed never-before-seen video of how congressional leaders responded to the attack. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland reports. As thousands of rioters swarmed the Capitol grounds after President Trump stopped the steel rally, we're seeing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's reaction for the first time to being told Trump wanted to march to the Capitol, too. You've been waiting for this, for trespassing on the Capitol grounds. I'm going to punch him out. I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to be happy. Then, later in the day, a new video released by the committee, House Speaker Pelosi is led to a secure location with other congressional leaders. They're putting on their tear gas masks. In the video, recorded by Pelosi's daughter, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is heard pleading for help from then Acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen. Yeah, why don't you get the president to tell them to leave the Capitol, Mr. Attorney General? And leaders of both parties are seen calling the Department of Defense. This cannot be just we're waiting for so-and-so. We need them there now, whoever you got. You, okay. have, you also have troops, this is Steny Hoyer, troops okay. so we have a little Fort bit of time to make that decision. Andrews Air Force Base, All right. other military bases. Thank you. We Thanks, need Paul. active Bye. duty, National Guard. How soon in the future can you have the place evacuated? Pelosi is also seen and heard on the phone with then Vice President Mike Pence, who later informs her the Capitol will reopen that night. Your sergeant in arms will inform you that their best information is that they believe that uh, the House and the Senate will be able uh, to reconvene in roughly an hour. Good news. During the hearing, committee members argued Trump agitated the crowd January 6th, then directed them to the Capitol, knowing some were armed and angry. The central cause of January 6th was one man, Donald Trump, whom many others followed. The committee used the word premeditated multiple times, arguing Trump and associates like Steve Bannon had long planned to claim victory on election night, regardless of the outcome. And what Trump's going to do is just declare victory. It, but it, that doesn't mean he's the winner. He's just going to say he's the winner. The committee also returned its focus to the U.S. Secret Service, whom they'd previously accused of stonewalling their probe. The panel showed intelligence the agency had seen predicting violence 11 days before the attack. They think that they will have a large enough group to march into D.C. armed, the source reported, and will outnumber the police so they can't be stopped. The source went on to say their plan is to literally kill people. Please, please take this tip seriously and investigate further. And with less than three months to finish its work, the committee has taken its investigation to the next level. Ms. Cheney. Aye. By voting to subpoena documents and testimony from the former president. He must be accountable. He is required to answer for his actions. The committee must wrap its work by the end of the calendar year, which gives them limited time to move on this subpoena. In response to all this on social media, the former president says he doesn't know why the committee didn't ask him to interview sooner. He also called the panel a total bust that has only served to further divide the country. Tanya, Nancy. Some strong words there uh, from the former president. Have we heard uh, what happens next for the committee and any other details that weren't shared? Yeah, the committee has taken this vote to issue the subpoena, Nancy. They actually have to do the subpoena issuing, which is a process the chairman will put in black and white, pen to paper, likely in the coming days. All that being said, the committee has tried to shift the focus to this written report they have to issue. They're required to issue a comprehensive written report of all their findings from those hundreds of interviews and thousands of pieces of paper. That written report must come 30 days before the end of this panel, which could mean the end of this Congress, which means it could come in about a month or two. The written report has been something the committee has tried to raise expectations for, saying that's where you look for everything they found, including the components of their investigation, they weren't able to make part of those 10 public hearings. All right, Scott, moving now to the situation of the classified documents seized at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, we have some updates there. The Supreme Court recently rejected former President Trump's request that a special master be allowed to review classified papers. What more do we know about this, and does it seem to affect the Justice Department's access as part of their criminal investigation? 
And meanwhile, that's still happening too. <laughs> Everything happening at once. In the middle of the January 6th business meeting yesterday, the Supreme Court rejected former President Trump's request they intervene in this ongoing and growing dispute over those records seized from Mar-a-Lago. The former president had actually made a very narrow request of the Supreme Court to work on some type of decision that give access to those 103 pages of classified records back to the special master. And the special master presumably would continue his review of the other records in the meantime. All that being said, the request of the Supreme Court has served to further extend the clock and draw out this legal battle even further. There's really no date certain for when all of this reviewing and all of this litigating will end, which means the former president has successfully extended the clock. Mm -hmm. All right. Scott McFarland, thank you very much for joining us.